you know. Hi everybody, how you doing? Um, it's Thursday, happy, happy Thursday. Um, it's a beautiful sunny day again, it really is. It's gorgeous, gorgeous out there. I think I've pushed the table too far that way. Do you want me to do, do it this way a wee bit? There you go, you can, Drew can get in the right place then. <laughs> you couldn't move, you were like, oh, like that. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. What are we going to do today? We're going to make a reading pillow today. Totally going to make a reading pillow today. Uh, and I'm going to show you some um, different ways. Well, not different ways. We're going to do a kiddies version, but I'm going to show you some adult ones that I've done as well. So, um, you know, don't think it's just for, a, you know, like a kiddie project. I think this would make amazing presents for, like, dads and mums and all sorts. Anyone who's a reader, really. It doesn't even have to be reading. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, so who's coming online today? Who's there? Just waiting for people to show up. Yeah, oh, everybody come in. Oh, Heather's just said hi. Hi, Heather. I'll tell you what, it's absolutely flipping boiling in here today. I've come back over from the shop and uh, the boys have had, I think they've had the heating on for about six hours and I normally like the heating on, toasty, toasty warm. I can't breathe in here today. It's like, oh, I need some fresh air. It's so hot. It's really, really warm. Um, so, first things first, we're going to do the challenge post, which I popped up yesterday. It was really, really quickie one. We said we'd do um, uh, brights, or show us your brights. And, oh, didn't you show us your brights? <laughs> there were some really beautiful things there. I liked the pom-pom wreath. There was a couple of amazing crochet blankets. It was one that was dark with, like, um, like rainbow mandala type thing. I remember that was just stunning. Um, some gorgeous, gorgeous quilts as well. All sorts of lovely things. So, yeah, you definitely uh, searched around and found some brights and beautifuls. So, um, uh, I've picked a little layer, a little charm pack, which is, again, all lovely bright colours and everything. I go with, I thought, go with that theme. We'll go for that lovely bright theme. And a reel of um, rainbow variegated thread. So, it doesn't look very rainbow in the reel, but when it stitches out, it stitches out right through the colours of the rainbow. It's really, really pretty. So, Pick that out for the prize for you. And I've got all your names uh, in a hat, or rather an unfinished bento bag. <laughs> so uh, I'm gonna give those a squiggle around and Drew, give those a, have a good rummage and pick a name for me. Got one? Okay, so these are going to Carol Iveson. This is coming to you, lovely. Um, I got your um i'll drop you a message in a minute and uh, get your address and all and we'll send these out to you so congratulations um i love seeing you i love the challenge posts i really do i really love seeing what everyone's doing what everyone's got going on and everything so yeah that was really lovely fab 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 um so we're going to do reading pillows today anything else i've got to remind you of i don't think so don't forget to get your ticket for saturday if you haven't got it already um well, I don't think there was anything else. It's been busy today in the shop. I've been, uh, not many website orders, but I had loads and loads come through from the craft shows, um, who, what, which is the, the company I'm doing this thing for on Saturday. Uh, lots and lots of people ordering Manx quilt kits. So, yeah, that's been a bit crazy <laughs> this morning. And says in the middle of a Zoom. So says, uh, got a Zoom class going on today as well. So, yeah, it's all good. So we're going to have a little go at uh, a reading pillow today. Really, really nice and simple. I did these last year for several of my nieces and nephews, like the little ones. And I did them in like really bright kiddie fabrics. And I put a, a new picture book in there. Um, and then, um, so like if you, um, my one niece, she um, she loves pigs and things. So um, I did um, a, copy, a really nice copy of Three Little Pigs. And then I bought like um, three little, they were from Ikea actually, you know, the little soft toys like that and sat them in the pocket. Um, so they're a really nice way of, of giving a Christmas present. Um, but I thought, actually, they don't have to be for kids. So I did these last night for, um, for blokes because you can put an adult's book in there. They can keep their remote controls and things in them. You could roll up the newspaper. You could clip a pen over the side. You could do what you want with them. Do you remember we made these blocks ages and ages ago? Um, we were having a little experiment. Um, it was with a charm pack and we, we did them half square triangles and then cut into them diagonally and stuff. So Drew, you get getting these. Sorry, hun. I might, I'm coming quite close <laughs> today, aren't I? <laughs> so um, I thought, well, why not use these up? because otherwise they're just going to sit there doing nothing. So this was the leftover charm pack from when we were playing around with these. Um, 
and I'd made lots of half square triangles in order to to do these so I made one and that and then this is just the coordinating flannel which will we've got some some of this going on the website later on actually um it was the farmhouse flannels charm pack they feel amazing I just want to keep stroking them they feel really really nice so yeah I just used rather than just being a plain piece across the front sorry these are really difficult to show you <laughs> rather than it being just a plain piece across the front um I thought why not inset one of those little orphan blocks okay and put that on the front it uses it up it uses it up so um and you know my husband and I can hide the remote controls and uh, and stuff when he doesn't want me to change over from the formula one or something you can shove it down in there and I'm never I'm never going to find it am I um and also my favorite book the princess bride favorite film as well I do love it so um so yeah so just an envelope backs on the back um but I just thought they'd be nice presents for adults in your life too, okay? They're not, reading pillows are not just for kiddies. Um, so anybody having a chat or a comment there before we get uh -huh. started? Linda says, love those finals. Mary said, I have just joined the crafting event, looking forward to it. Oh, lovely, fab. Sandra says, they look good. Uh, Grace yeah. said, hi both. Uh, just cutting out all for the poppy hanging. Ah, oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Ah, oh, fab, cool, thank you guys. Right, so we're gonna do a kid's version. We're gonna do a really nice, because I just love these bright fabrics. These are the Noah Ark ones. I think I showed you them a little while ago, actually. Absolutely love these fabrics. Um, so yeah, so um, I thought I'd show you how simple they are to put together. And then we can talk about like different types of, you know, um, what's the word, um, ways of decorating them and stuff as well. So you will need, um, basic cushion basic fabric so i'm going with 18 inch because i like to put a 20 inch cushion in an 18 inch cushion cover it makes it fuller it makes it sort of a bit more sumptuous so i've cut this out at 18 and a half and this is going to be my front and i've just wadded that up okay i would actually quit probably quilt into this as well and i would put a backing on but i ran out of time frankly because i was making those and trying to sort out saturday and ran out of time so I would actually quilt into this um, just to keep it all together. So if the quilt cushion cover does get washed, you want to, you know, want to make sure it um, stays together. OK, so that's an 18 and a half inch square. And then I'm going to use this on the back to make the envelope back. So I've got 18 and a half inch oh, by 14 and a half inch. OK, and I've got two of those to make the envelope back. And then for the front sort of flat bit where you can slide the pockets into, um, I'm going to do in, in this coordinating fabric, that's going to be the pocket, and I've got a piece that's 18 and a half by 10 and a half, and then I've got a contrast, which is 18 and a half by 11 and a half, okay? We're going to start by making the, the pocket front, so I'll put all those out of the way. Um, I'm just going to give this a very quick iron, actually, because uh, I've got a real big crease in there, and that's going to look horrible. So how is everybody today? Everybody having a chat? Anybody talking to me? Uh, Sally said plan to make these for my nephew, great nephews. Ah, oh, lovely. Yeah, we um I made like I said, I made them for a couple of my nieces um last Christmas. And uh you, you know, it doesn't only have to be one book, you could easily get two or three books in there if you wanted to, but it's just a nice way of you know giving a book. You could I also put I'm not going to on this one, um but I also put like a little handle on it so they could carry it to the car and stuff and all with them as well. So it's almost like a, a pillow with a, a bag on it. <laughs> okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by putting these two, these are the flap pieces, the pocket pieces on the front. We're gonna put them right sides together and we're gonna stitch along the long edge. Now that you wanna stitch along the top, okay? So if you've got a directional fabric like this, Okay, you want to make sure you're stitching along the top, not the bottom, otherwise your fabric's going to be upside down. So I'm just going to line this up and I'm going to whiz down here. Okay, simple quarter of inch seam. Okay, I'll just leave my water out there. So I've still got my machine on zigzag because I Frankenstein some wadding together a minute ago. So um, let's go back to normal stitch. There we go. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch all the way down the top just to put these two together. Okay. Anybody else there having a chat while I'm doing this? Uh, Andy Griffith says, hi, what is it today? Uh, we're doing reading pillows today. So, 
so um, I've just been showing them at the, the beginning of the video so you'll be able to watch back and have a little look Okay, anybody else there? Linda, Linda's just said I love the red quilt behind you. I remember making two of these in your class, one in red and one in the other, greens and navy. Oh, you did, didn't you, Linda? You're, the green and navy, well, I mean, I love the red one as well, but the green and navy one was such a, really unusual to see red work in those colours, but it worked really, really well, really well. It's fab. Okay, and then what we're going to do now is we're going to open this out and you want to put the bottom edge to the bottom edge of your contrast like that before you iron it okay and can you see that that then pops out all right you then want to iron it so that the seam here sits that way so you're going to iron it on my case towards the green okay so i'm going to iron this first of all towards the green like that all the way along like that what you what this does gives you like a little faux pipe in gives you a little contrast thing so when i fold this up together lining the bottom lining the bottom edges up that little bit of green pokes out the top like that and you've got that little sort of contrasting binding but done really really easy and all i did was uh, uh, make this the back in an inch bigger than the front okay so you end up with little contrast binding like that all right we're now going to just top stitch as close as well stitch in the ditch really you could top stitch you want but you know i i think i like to leave that binding free i just think it looks cleaner so i'm going to stitch in the ditch all the way down there okay just to hold these two nice and close any other questions while I'm doing this? Because I've got to concentrate a little bit on this one. <laughs> uh, Tina said, uh, washing from work uh, in my cleaning cupboard. Oh, bless you. <laughs> That's something, isn't it? When you've got to hide away to watch your white gecko. <laughs> Anybody else there? Uh... I'm going to say a quick shout out. Hello to all the... Um, the new people that have been watching as well actually um, we've had quite a few people over the last couple of days comment saying that you're new so welcome thanks for joining us um, if you haven't watched back the other 170 odd episodes of us we are on YouTube um, we don't see every all the comments come through during the live so I do try to go back in afterwards and just you know like and say hello or answer any questions okay so I've just stitched along there just to hold all that in place Okay. Uh, Susie Duncan said, that's a great idea for a book group secret centre. Oh, yeah, wouldn't it be? Oh, yeah, that's a really nice idea. You could make them a reading pillow and pop a new book in. Um, there's a thing called, oh, what's it called? Blind Date with a Book. Um, Sean actually bought it me for Christmas the one year. And the book, you don't know what you're buying. So you choose by, like, genre. And then there's, like, four key words on the it, they come printed in like beauty uh, in like wrapped in um brown paper with a really pretty tag and all on it and just on the front of the brown paper is printed four words which are like you know the key bits of the story you know the, the type of story it is so it might say historical crime romance i know or something on it you know and it would it'd give you ideas um but it's a really good way of reading things that you wouldn't necessarily pick up um and it also makes you kind of look outside your you know because i tend to pick up the same books all the time the same type of books so um yeah it's a really really good idea it's called blind date with a book it's definitely worth um worth having a look at because uh it's um it was a brilliant story actually it was a really really good book um and i would never just from the cover or picking it up it's not not my normal sort of normal sort of book so um it was good to read something different um, right so like i said i i haven't quilted this one but i would i just ran out of time yesterday I was doing those and, and other bits so oh excuse me my nose is still really itchy because of my lack of tablets um i would i've wadded up the front i would put a piece of fabric on the back and then I would just do some simple quilting. So I didn't quilt the flannel ones because the flannel is really thick. But because this one, which is just like the 100% uh, cotton, is a lot, um, it's not a thin fabric, but a lot drapier fabric. 
I felt it needed something because otherwise the pocket can sort of pull away a little bit. So these were, um, because it's such a, the flannel's really nice and thick and everything, it, it didn't need any wadding in it. I didn't put any wadding in these, um, but with this I have, because I felt it needed it, okay? So I've got my, I'm gonna try and do this towards you guys. Um, I'm, you're gonna pretend I've already quilted this. I, you, you could just do some simple diagonal lines through it, pretend I've already quilted it. You then, I'm gonna ignore the excess wadding. Okay, I'm gonna trim that off afterwards. You're gonna then line your pocket up on the bottom like this, okay? I mean, these really are incredibly simple, guys, all right? And you just wanna pin it in place. Any other questions there? I just want to pin it in. Uh, Marion said if she loves this idea, she's going to make one for her granddaughter. She loves reading. Oh, uh, yeah. it's um, And I think it's a nice way of encouraging kids to read as well. I mean, they don't have to be reading pillows. You could put some soft toy, you know, soft toy or a game or something in there. Like I said, you know, with the adult ones, I think they'd be nice. Um, you, Like I said, keep the remote control. You could buy um, a magazine or something. Um and uh, you know, you could put like a magazine in, if you've bought somebody a magazine subscription, you could put a magazine and you know, some, um, you know, like a bag of Haribo or something or whatever their favorite sweets are, okay? And it would be a nice way of giving that present as a magazine subscription. So just pin that on like that, and I'm gonna put that aside just for a second. And you want your back two pieces, okay? That one, and again, I'm just give this one a quick iron because it's, Good first scrunched up. Very first scrunched up. Anybody else there having a chat? Uh Eileen says this uh waitress sell those books. Waitress sell blind date with a book, do uh, blind dates with a book, do they? Oh that's cool. I bought um I did I've bought them for other people. Since Sean um bought that one for me, I've bought them for other people. Um because I just think it's such a cool idea. Um and uh I didn't realise you could get them in waitress. I've always just um done them online so gone directly to them you want to hem two of these edges so these are your back pieces which were 18 and a half by 15, uh, 14 and a half okay I do them that big because I like a really nice big overlap on an envelope so it doesn't gape you could if you're being frugal with fabric do them a lot smaller so that they just overlap and you could put some velcro or you know do a couple of buttonholes and put some buttons on just to keep it all closed okay <coughs> I want to think about, so I'm going to try and do this towards you. I want to think about, the because I've got directional fabric, the way this is going to look on the back. So if this is the top facing you guys, if this is the top and this is the bottom, they're the right way directionally. So I want to hem the bottom of this one, which is my top fabric, and the top of my bottom fabric. Okay, so I'm going to hem this, the bottom here and the top there to keep them in this um, directionally right okay I'm just going to turn a little double hem okay so I'm just going to turn that over what's that about a quarter of an inch just over a quarter of an inch all the way around like that and then again okay just to get all that oh god that gets hot <laughs> uh, yes is there is that animal fabric in the shop? What's it called? Like um, it's called, um, it's by Riley Blake. It's definitely on the website. It's Riley Blake and it's Noah's Ark. Um, yeah, it's all, it's the Noah's Ark range. Um, it should definitely be on the, on the website. And then this one, because this is the bottom piece, I'm going to, I, uh, I'm going to hem the top on this one. Okay. I absolutely love it. I love this little, like little otters and all floating and it's just delicious. I absolutely love this fabric. I've always had a bit of a thing about Noah's Ark. For being a non-religious girl, um, I always liked the, liked the Noah's Arks. I was kind of, I remember when I was doing my ceramics in um, A-level, I made a whole Noah's Ark out of, uh, out of ceramics. Okay, so... I'm going to hem both those edges. So we'll whip back over to the sewing machine. Ooh, nearly. Nearly had that down, didn't I? <laughs> Here we go. So I'll be just about right today. It's going to be one of those disaster days, I'm telling you. 
right? Yeah, Sean said there's still a chance to get your tickets on the for our last raffle. Oh yeah, year. yeah, absolutely. The last raffle of the year, I think. Yeah, there's still a few left on that as well. So Sean definitely says we're 12. checking that out. I don't. Sean said there's twelve left. Twelve left, yeah. Yeah, so uh, have a little look at that because that's going to be our last one for the year because we'll have the advent running for the rest of the year. All the way down. Uh, off we go. It's a very dull bit of sewing. Just a quick little hem. All the way down. These are really quick to do as well. You know, if you've got a last minute present you need to make, you could genuinely make one in very, very quickly. Okay. So I'm gonna try and try and do this towards you as well, okay? So the with an envelope back. You go top down, bottom up, okay? So we're gonna go, and that's the way you do it. So you put your top down first, and it goes top, so it goes from the there, top down. Okay, so I'm gonna put, there's my hemmed edge there. I'm gonna put, go top down. So top goes down first, and it goes downwards. And then bottom up, so bottom goes second, and it comes from the bottom upwards, okay? That's how I remember because I used to have to keep a little uh, a little one made up because I was forever put doing envelope backs and then having to <laughs> yeah having to uh, unpick them because they were the wrong way round because you want the, the top the flap that comes from the top to be on the outside so I know it's gone down first but it'll end up on the outside because otherwise if it was the other way around and the bottom one was up like that all stuff gets caught in there so you wanted <laughs> you want the top to come down okay and bottom to go up okay so bottom up like that and you can see i've got a nice overlap which will stop any gaping and then we're going to grab some pins so I mean, you do need to pin this okay you know i don't do pinning much but you do need to pin this so i'm going to just pin round to keep it all together while we stitch it okay so i'll make sure that i definitely pin where these um overlaps are like that all the way around and then to do the same the other side so I'm just gonna flip that round and do this again here any other other questions there anybody uh Caroline says she struggles with envelope backs like your rhyme yeah top down bottom up I think it's always like when you're getting dressed you bring your top down and you pull your bottoms up that's how I remember it <laughs> putting yourself decent top down bottom up <laughs> There we go. Right. Okay. And then just put one along the edge. You really just want to keep those, all that that pocket and everything, nice and secure. I'm gonna I'm gonna stitch all the way round. Okay. You don't need to leave a gap or anything because we'll turn it through here. So I'm gonna stitch all the way round. And because we're gonna do a little like faux piping around the edge, um, we're gonna do that little tiny oxford edge, which gives that nice finish to it. You want to do this about a quarter of an inch, so that when you do the we do the next bit of stitching, it'll be about half an inch. Okay. So I want that to be a quarter of an inch. We're going to go all the way around. So this is going to be dull, guys. So talk to me. What are you up to? What have you been doing? Anybody been watching Bake Off? I caught up with, caught up with Bake Off last night while I was stitching. Anybody doing anything exciting? I'm just going to up my stitch length. Anybody there? No comments yet. Pardon? No comments yet. No comments yet. got um quilt on the machine oh, i was hoping to get two quilts done today on the machine on daphne but it didn't happen because <laughs> i had about 12 phone calls there was a there were a few website orders and then i had to do, deal with all these ichf orders ready for saturday as well so so yeah it's not happened then i've suddenly like ah it's 10 past 12 get on with it <laughs> get ready for one o'clock Sarah says she's stuffing her face. You're stuffing your face? Ah, oh, nice. How did the Zoom go, Sarah? Hopefully it all went well. They've all made some beautiful sewing machine covers or they're just all having a lunch break. <laughs> I wish I was stuffing my face. <gasps> Watching Bake Off. I'm on a diet at the moment. Um, well, not at the moment. I'm on a diet. I'm, I'm, I'm making an effort. And uh, I'm doing okay, actually. I, I'm, I'm really pleased with how I'm doing so far. But 
watching Bake Off last night, they were making fresh donuts. Now, I'm not a sweet girl. I'm all about the bread and the crisps. But, oh my God, I love a donut. I re any, more than any other cake. I'm not a massive cake person, but, oh, I do love a donut. And these fresh donuts looked amazing. I've never craved a donut as much as I did last night. I'm just like, I want a donut. My husband's like, I thought you were being good. I am being good. He's like, how many points is that going to be? I was like, I don't even want to know. I didn't have a donut. And a cup of tea. And a no, no sugar jelly instead. Was not the same as a... As a Cream filled donut. <laughs> Anybody else there having a chat? Uh, Susie says she's colouring gnomes and mushrooms. Colouring gnomes and mushrooms. Oh, what are you up to? Oh, oh there's somebody at the door. Drew's just going to run run to the door while I go down this last side. Okay, so here we go. Down this last side. What are you up to? Colouring gnomes and mushrooms, as in on fabric or on paper. Are you making Christmas cards? I need to know, Susie, what you're doing. Excuse me, slip my water. Right, I've gone all the way around the edges and I can take the pins out. There we go. Take all the pins out. Oh, got a little order. Got an ink order there. Nothing very exciting. Nothing very exciting. There we go. All the way out. Is that all the pins? Nope, one more. So, what I would do, oh no, there's another one there. See, I'm terrible at ever, ever leaving pins in. So we just want to trim that up. We want to get rid of all that wadding. So I'm going to grab my longer ruler um, and just get rid of all that excess wadding. There's my rotary cutter. Okay, like that, all the way around. And trim off like that. I do this at this point because I find that obviously fabrics can move and walk when they're on wadding so I always tend to do it at this point so that I know that I can square it up once I've finished the majority of the sewing. Right. Sean doesn't like fresh warm donuts. <gasps> oh. She said they should be cold, eating cold, the, the smell of fresh cooking. Oh, are. this one of the things I love about this going to the seaside. It's like, I think it's a childhood memory, going to Western Supermare for like a day out. Um, we, um, oh, are you just getting lots of all my mess over there where I've no, dumped everything off the way. table? <laughs> going to Western Supermare and having hot donuts on the pier. <gasps> hot ring sugar donuts. Oh, don't. I really want a donut again now. <laughs> really, basically, a, a basic ring donut, warm. Or I'll go with a cold donut, but it's got to be just raspberry jam in it, nothing else. Don't really do all this, cus you know, crispy creams. Nah. When they put all, like, random stuff in them, don't want one of those. So, yeah, watching Bake Off last night wasn't good for my... Well, it was good for my diet. I didn't give in, but I really wanted one. <laughs> well, what's everyone else saying? Uh, Susan says she's making samples for her, Achan uh, her Chanda show with Mushroom Ling. Who's which Susie is this? Duncan. Oh, sorry. I thought you were Susie Harrison. Sorry, my darling. I was I was getting my Susies confused. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm interested now to see that. I'm going to have to check that out in a minute. <laughs> um, so we are going to pull this through. So I've clipped the edges, okay, here, just to get rid of the bulk. And we're going to pull it through. You didn't, did, did Susie, did you say whether they were fabric ones or are they um, paper craft? Oh, careful of the extra pins that were in the pocket because I've just managed to stab myself with those. Say so I said custard or cream. I think oh. custard with donuts are the best. No, don't do a custard donut. Don't do a custard donut. Right, and then you want to pop your finger right in there and really push that out, okay? Really, really push that out to get that um, all the way out there, Okay. And then into here as well. Oh, see, I really want to know what Susie's up to now. I want to see what they are. I'm so curious. It will kill me one day. You can just get the pillow into there. And get that right into there. And into this one as well. Okay. Because there's quite a lot of wadding and stuff as well. And you've got the bulk of the pocket. You just want to get that through. All right. Give that a shake like that and your pillowcase is nearly done I mean it's really nice and quick and simple 
I would give this a quick press and then what we're going to do is we're going to basically do like a French seam. We're going to go all, all the way around the outside like this. Now, while I'm ironing this, all I'm doing is just rolling that just to get that seam nice and up right on the edge, giving it a quick press, okay? And then we're going to stitch all the way around again just to finish it off. So, anybody else there? Anybody else having a chat? Uh, Natalie said my nan used to make donuts. They were the best. Mm, I do love a donut. Do love a donut. See, oh, I've got to stop talking about donuts because all I'm thinking is I want a donut now. <laughs> there we go. Nearly there, guys. All the way round. And um, okay, you could leave it like that. There's no, no no reason why you don't leave it like that. I just think this next little step gives it a nice finish. So all we're going to do is we're going to stitch all the way round about i tend to use edge of foot and leave it you know sort of in the center so what's that just about three eighths of an inch isn't it but you can do as deep or smaller an edge as you want but i tend to use edge of foot right on the edge here and come all the way around okay there we go so i'm just gonna tuck that in like that uh, Susie said stamps and dies. Oh, nice. Uh, they, can, they can be used on fabric or rice paper, card, etc. Oh, fat. Oh, that sounds interesting. I quite like the idea. It's not something I've ever got into, but I quite like the idea of because um, I draw so much, you know, like things with patterns and appliques and the red works and stuff. I quite like the idea of being able to draw and paint into fabric. I really should, really should have a look at it, shouldn't I? Mm -hmm. but, oh, I'll check it out later, Susie, on, uh, on your page and have a little look. <laughs> Anybody else there having a chat? Uh, Tina just said, just got my entry for the raffle. Ah, fabulous. And then I it, Susie says, I prefer, prefer caramel shoe buns. Oh, I do like a caramel shoe bun as well. It's pastry though, you see. The pastry, you know, give me a sausage roll over, you know, anything. Because it's pastry, it's savoury. Can we stop talking about food? It's not too good to do my diet any good whatsoever. <laughs> there we go. So I'm just going all the way around here. Hang on. Just, that's just moved just a weeny bit. Anything else? Talk to me about something else, ladies. Come on. <laughs> what, else, what else is there? Anyone talking about? Are they all just talking about donuts and food now? No, that's coming with Susie's. There we go. So I've just top stitch I'm just using the edge of the foot all the way around, okay? Uh, Karen says, like, uh, like these Xmas 2021 pre uh, presents this year is all sorted. Uh, could uh, put a colouring book and crayons inside. Oh, yeah. So if you, that's a really nice idea, actually. Just, I'm going to stop just a second. If you maybe, before you attached it, uh, before you put the back on, if you maybe just like sewed an extra line down here and made a little internal pocket, you could put, pens and you know um because otherwise if it because it's quite a wide pocket isn't it you might your pens and all might fall out but if you put an another line of stitching down to make a little smaller pocket you could put some pens and felts and all in there or you know wax crayons or whatever and then a coloring book this side yeah that's a nice idea you could set if you wanted to do it all arty you could just stitch through it like one and a half inch down the whole thing and you could put um or you could put a second, second. Oh, see now you're making me think. You could put a second pocket on the front, so you've got a two depth pocket, and stitch through that one, and then attach it to the front, so you could put lots of crayons in. You like you see those little makeup brush holders or, or crayon holders with lots and lots of bits. You could do that at the front, and then slide coloring books in the back. But play around with it. Absolutely, play around with it. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Right, no, you, you carry on. I said Lynn just said to have some fruit. Yes, yeah, I know you don't like it. Oh, not fruit. Blech. Vegetables, yum. Fruit, what? <laughs> I'd eat an apple. I, I will eat an apple if I really have to. <laughs> and then Sean said you were the one who brought up food. I know, I did bring up food because we started to talk about Bake Off, wasn't it? It's my own fault. My own fault. <laughs> um. The other nice thing you could do, and which I did last year actually, is we I used our alphabet template, the 
the, you can buy those on the website. Um, and I put their initials on the front pocket. So be again, before I added the back on, so I did all this work before before it went on, before we put the back on, um, you could applique somebody's name on it. You could put an initial or something on it. It is actually big enough that this, that you could use, um, you know, we've got our applique templates. There's nothing stopping you. You know, you could have put the whale on there. You know, we could have applique the whale on there and then an initial or something on the front pocket. So that's basically the cushion cover done. Okay, you can see now you've got that nice little, I don't know if you can see now, by, by stitching around that top edge, you've got that nice little neat faux edge. And what that does as well is it encloses the seam on the inside, like a French seam, encloses that seam there so that when you wash it and everything, you're not, you don't get any fraying, okay? But really, really quick and simple. Play around with it. What would you do with them? You know, I'm thinking now, actually, I could do a second pocket. So I could have done a smaller version of this, laid that on top and stitched that through for crayons. You know, if you're going to do one for an adult, you know, do, you might want to put a, a smaller pocket in for the remote control. But I like the idea of you like, because I know for the boys a few years ago, we did magazine subscriptions for them. And it's really boring present to get. I mean, they had other bits as well, obviously. But it's, it, there's nothing really to give, even though they're getting the magazine they want throughout the year. But you could buy a copy of that magazine, put that in there, you know, as a, a way of, you know, saying this is what you're getting for the rest of the year. You know, you could roll up a newspaper if it's a newspaper subscription, you know, maybe do a pen pocket or something. So if somebody's an avid crossword or Sudoku van or something, you could do that. Use your orphan blocks, We've, which, which is what I did here, you know, which is what I did with this. Use up your orphan blocks. You know, don't, it doesn't have to have to be a small one. It could be an orphan block here, you know, just put a board around it or something. Um, I just think we're a nice way of using up all those bits that we, we have like hanging around, you know. <laughs> but they make beautiful presents. I do love this fabric. So cute. So any question what time are we? We're okay on time. Any questions or comments there before we get uh, going? Sue said you could, uh, you could make the pocket out of vinyl, so crayons and colour could be seen. Ah, uh, you could, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like that wipe clean. I, If you're going to use vinyl on the front, I would use a binding around the edge. So still put an envelope back, but rather than turn it through, lay it all up the right way and bind it. Um, just because vinyl is very unforgiving if you're turning through and stuff. Um uh, you've worked with vinyl quite a lot, Susie. I know when you were making that lovely pouch. Just Duncan. Oh, sorry. Susie different. Duncan. Oh, different Duncan. Sorry. Different Susies. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, I would I would probably bind the edge, though, because vinyl can be a bit bit unforgiving, can't it? <laughs> uh, Sarah said she embroidered a unicorn and rhyme. You did. Yes, on your machine, didn't you? Because you did them for the girls. I remember you showing me them. Yeah, so she um, used her embroidery machine to uh, embroider out um, like a little rhyme about reading and a, and a picture and all on the pocket first. So lots of ways of playing around with it. Lots and lots of ways of you know, making them personal, making them really, really special for somebody. Um, and I think absolutely doing them for adults as well as kids. Anything else there? Um, no. No? No? Cool. Okay. Um, I will... See you all back here on Monday at one o'clock. It won't be me. It'll be Sarah on Monday. And then I'm doing the rest of the week because I've got hospital appointments. So um, Sarah's going to do Monday. Um, so I'll see you Tuesday. If not, I will see you on... If you have bought a ticket, don't forget you can go to the craft shows um, page. We'll put we'll put the link up again for you. It's £6 um, a ticket. Um, but you get access to 30 different workshops. And you can keep that access right the way through till the end of December. So you can you don't have to watch them all, <laughs> all in a day. Well, they're 90 minutes long, so you wouldn't be able to watch them all in a day. But that gives you access to all areas uh, right the way through to December. Um, so that I'm on at 12 o'clock. Um, I will be live on the quilting in the quilting den on the craft shows page. So um, if you have bought a ticket, amazing. Please say hello so I know you're out there. <laughs> and I'm not just talking to, you know, the thin air. <laughs> um, if you haven't bought a ticket, six quid, 30, 30 demonstrations. That's not bad at all. So, um, yeah, I will put a link up for it so you can, can get hold of that, okay, if you want to. So that's Saturday. What are we doing Sunday? Sunday I've got a Zoom. So I've got some of you lovely ladies for a Zoom class. So, um, yeah, busy weekend. Busy, busy again. So, 
Um, I'll see you all very soon. Take care. Bye.